Hey class, so I just wanted to quickly show you what the inside of a computer looks like and what the components all look like together. So what you're looking at right here, this is the motherboard. This is the place that connects all of the pieces together in a computer. And we can see that the motherboard has the place on the back here. Might be a little out of focus, but you can see the inputs and the outputs there, a place to plug in our mouse and keyboard and lots of USB and uh, other connections on the back of the motherboard there. So it allows for inputs and outputs and it allows all the components to talk to each other. So to put this together let's first put in the CPU, the brain of the computer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this CPU in here and this is an old Core i5 uh, CPU and it just goes in this little slot right here with all these pins and you can see all the little lines that lead away from the CPU as it gets all the information that it needs. And it's got this little handy um, clamp on it that locks the CPU into place, gives all those pins, all that information a way to get out. And we would also eventually mount a fan on there but I'm going to leave the fan off for a moment just so we can remember where everything is. The next thing I'm going to put in is that RAM, is the thing that helps our computer and our CPU hold on to information for a short amount of time. So this is the RAM that I'm going to use, and this RAM is uh, gets a little hot, so it has this heat sink on here, and I've got some old school RAM. You can see it kind of looks like a motherboard. It's got all these little traces and all these little chips, but this one gets hot, so it uses the, the metal heat sink to stay cool. And that goes up here in these slots right here. It's real simple. You just click it in and you put it together. I actually built this computer um, years ago, around 2010, so about a decade ago. I built this computer uh, for gaming and for school. And by today's standards, it wouldn't be a very fast computer. But, for example, this CPU chip that's about 10 years old is almost a thousand times faster than this CPU chip, which was around in the early 90s. And there's a thousand times jump between this CPU and this CPU. Even though they're the same size, this one is a thousand times faster, and that's still 10 years old. The current CPUs are now even faster. So we've got our CPU, we've got the RAM together that helps it uh, communicate, and then we've got a graphics card here, and this graphics card helps us with more computing power. It also gets hot, we can tell that because it's got the fan, it does a lot of calculating as well, and that goes in another slot right here. Now that would click in if I had this in what is in its case, which is called a tower, and then I could install uh, using a little ribbon cable that unfortunately I don't have, I can install a hard drive here and give this computer the storage that it needs. So I'll put the hard drive there so you can scoot everything over so you can see the hard drive is going to connect in there. And here's an old school hard drive. So this, to sh give you an illustration again of how quickly things are changing, this is a 1000 megabyte hard drive. And this hard drive is 500 gigabytes. So this is over 5,000 times bigger than this hard drive. Uh, no, sorry, 500. 500 times bigger in the amount of storage that can hold. Not physically, obviously. It's even smaller than this hard drive. But it can hold 500 times more information on that hard drive. The last thing that my computer needs in order to get running is the power supply which is this giant brick right it's huge you can't even fit on the screen it's so huge whoops I lost my graphics card it's not clicked in so the power supply goes over here and if you notice there's these pins right up at the top here these little pins and they got this big old connector and that big old connector fits into those pins And there we go. All we would have to do now, once we have our hard drive fully connected up, we plug in our power supply to a uh, into the wall, and our computer would actually be ready to run at this point. That's all that it takes to build a simple computer. Now, there's a few extra steps, putting a fan on the CPU, putting this all into a case, which is sometimes called a tower, but that's all that you really need to build a computer. 
but things are a little different. A laptop is a little different. So I want to show you what the inside of your student laptop looks like. And I am going to go over that in the next video.